Hi everyone, my name is Leanne and today I'm going to be telling you all about the lowest rated books on my ebook TBR. I did do a version of this video about my physical TBR um, not too long ago and I'll leave that link down below if you want to check it out. A lot of people seem to enjoy that so I decided to do an ebook version and I think at some point I will definitely do a highest rated version for both physical and ebook as well. I've just gone onto my Goodreads unread ebook shelf and I have got it to sort it by star rating. So I'm going to tell you about the 10 lowest rated books on my TBR and I'm going to start with the one that has the highest rating of that 10 and then work my way to the absolute lowest rating. So the first book I'm going to tell you about is The Graces by Laura Eve which has a rating of 3.28 stars on Goodreads. All I remember about this book is that it is about a town and they have like an obsession with witches and I do remember that when I hauled this book someone told me that there was something problematic about it. I can't remember what it was but I feel like that probably goes some way to explain the lower ratings for this book. I do really want to read more about witches though. Um, I was absolutely obsessed with witches as a kid and it's something that I've really grown out of in my adult reading so um, I do think, still think I want to read this one but um, I should probably find out what the problematic aspects of it are so I can bear those in mind if I do read it. The next book is Record of the Night Too Brief by Hiromi Karakami and this is translated from Japanese by Lucy North. I really want to read more translated fiction so it's a real shame that this one has such a low rating um, but I think I'm going to take that with a pinch of salt because it hasn't got that many ratings and what I find with books that don't have that many ratings they either have a strangely low rating or a strangely high rating. I really enjoyed all of the Japanese literature that I've read in the past although that is quite limited but I have enjoyed it um, and this is a collection of three short stories as well so this is definitely one that I still want to read. Next up we have All the Dirty Parts by Daniel Handler and this has a rating of 3.15. Daniel Handler you you may know better as the man behind Lemony Snicket, the A Series of Unfortunate Events books. This is a much more grown-up book and I think it is about um, a young man and his relationship with sex. I'm really interested in taking quite an analytical look at sex and relationships and why people can become so obsessed with sex, but I have heard people say that this kind of just goes towards being kind of gross and smutty and not in like that good quality smut kind of way but in a just like a kind of gross teenage boy way but it's about a teenage boy so I don't know. Next up I have Whistle in the Dark by Emma Healy which has a rating of 3.11 on Goodreads and this one is such a disappointment. I was so excited to read this book. It was one of my most anticipated releases for 2018. I absolutely loved Emma's previous book um, Elizabeth is Missing. It was one of my favourite books in the year that I read it and it's actually one that I would love to reread as well um, but I heard a lot of bad reviews about this book particularly um, from my good friend Leanne over at Literary Diversions. I heard there was just a lot of bad mental health rep in this so yeah this one's a bit of a disappointment. Next we have The Looking Glass House by Vanessa Tate and this has a rating of 3.08 on Goodreads. So this is not an Alice in Wonderland retelling but it's definitely Alice in Wonderland inspired. I think the author is like the great granddaughter of the um, little girl that inspired uh, the Alice stories. And this novel tells the origin of the story through I think it's a governess. There are a lot of bad Alice's Adventures in Wonderland inspired stories out there. I spoke about it recently in a um, presentation that I did and it does seem like this is one of the least popular ones out there but I absolutely love everything surrounding Alice in Wonderland so you know even if it's a, if it's a bad retelling I'm probably still gonna want to read it eventually. So like three stars isn't actually that bad of a rating but we're now getting into the below three stars which is where I feel like it's just not a good rating is it? Next up we have Serious Sweet by A.L. Kennedy. This has a rating of 2.95 on Goodreads and I have so many ebooks that I feel like I never even intended to read. I went through this stage of buying loads and loads of ebooks because I realised how cheap they were now as someone that understands the publishing industry I, I don't like how cheap they are. Now that I have an informed opinion about these things I hate Amazon and absolutely everything they stand for. In fact they don't stand for anything beyond profit so. But I just bought loads of ebooks because like oh I'd heard of this book. I think this was like long listed for the man booker or something. I'm not even sure what this book is about. I think it was like 
about the friendship between some middle-aged people. I don't know. I'm gonna be honest, I'm probably never gonna read this one unless you tell me that you really loved it and you recommend it. And if there are any of these that you're like, yeah, Leanne, this is actually an amazing book and this is why, then I would really appreciate that. But equally, if you wanna, you know, second the ratings and say, yeah, these books suck, then that's also good too. Next up we have Who Runs the World by Virginia Bergen. This has a rating of 2.95 on Goodreads and from what I remember about this book it's like a dystopian book where the girls, where there's a matriarchy I think. But I remember when I hauled this book and when I read the description of it I remember that it sounded quite um like quite cisgendered like it was really keeping to the binary of there being like girls and boys so i feel like if that's something that really runs through the whole book it would really stop me from enjoying it even though i love a good um feminist dystopian book if it's included if it's not including trans people it's not really feminist is it so i feel like that may be a factor as to why other people haven't enjoyed it either but who knows? Next up we have The Lemon Grove by Helen Walsh and this has a rating of 2.84 and I'm gonna be completely honest with you, I didn't know I had this book and I don't really know what it is. I feel like it may have been free on Kindle and I think that might be why I have it. I'm not sure what this is about, I think it's something to do with people who go on holiday and it might be smutty. Something I've discovered in the past year is I like a good smutty book occasionally, but it's gotta be good smut. And if this has a low rating, I don't trust it. I might be completely wrong. I don't know if this is a smutty book. If you know what this book is, please let me know. The penultimate book that I'm going to talk about is After Alice by Gregory Maguire. And this has a rating of 2.78 on Goodreads. Remember what I said about there being a lot of crappy Alice inspired books? Here's another one. I think this one tells the story of what happened to Alice's sister and her best friend following Alice's disappearance down the rabbit hole. It's got a beautiful cover and it really makes me think that it's YA, but I think this is actually an adult book. Um, as I said, there are a lot of bad Alice retellings out there, but I love them. I feel like this is definitely one that I'm still gonna wanna read at some point. Unless you straight up tell me, no Leanne, do not waste your time, it's up. And the final book, the lowest rated book on my TBR is Carnivalesque by Neil Jordan, which has a rating of 2.7 on Goodreads. And I'm really disappointed that this one is on the list. I was really looking forward to reading this book. I'd seen a couple of films that Neil Jordan had directed and I really enjoyed how sort of weird and surreal they were. As far as I remember, this is about a young boy who goes to a carnival and he goes into the Hall of Mirrors and he swaps places with his reflection. So he goes into the mirror and his reflection goes home with his parents. And that sounded like such a cool concept to me. I think I'm definitely still gonna read this one and as far as I'm aware, it's pretty short. I just love that concept. I love carnivals in books. I think they're just such a cool setting. So yeah, this is still one that I'm really intrigued by. Although I think I have heard a couple of bad reviews about it. Anyways, that's all I'm gonna talk about today. There is quite a mixed bag in these books. Some books that I know I don't wanna read anymore, but equally some that I am still intrigued by. As I've said throughout the video, I would love to hear your thoughts down below if you would like to encourage or discourage me to pick up any of these books. And also if you want to find out more about any of them, they will be linked down below in the description as well. So that's it from me today. I hope you guys are doing good and I will talk to you in my next video.